in my opinion, gyroscopes are one of the most fascinating topics in Newtonian mechanics, the physics of motion. And that's because it's the closest thing we can get to magic, I think. It looks pretty cool. Now, as it turns out, gyroscopes are a pretty complex topic to get into if we want to understand the real deep physics behind it. Today, I want to talk about how these work, but I'm not going to use vectors and cross products and torques and a lot of the technical terms that we get bogged down in that if you're a student learning in physics one, it's great. But if you're not, you kind of tune out. Today, I want to try and cover this in a way that's simple, but also complete, so that maybe we understand what's going on and just maybe we have a little fun while we're doing it. The first principle that we need to understand to talk about this topic is a thing that's called momentum. And there's two very basic things that affect momentum. You have mass, which is just how much stuff there is. The larger an object, the more dense it is, the heavier it is, the more mass it has. And speed, or velocity, which is how fast it's moving, that's the speed part, how fast it's moving, and in what direction it's moving. That's the velocity part. When you combine these together, so you get m times v, mass times velocity, you get a thing that's called momentum. So it's mass moving. And mass moving at a certain speed is the size of the momentum, how big it is. And mass moving in a certain direction is the direction of the momentum. So we can change those two things about momentum of the system. How fast it's moving and what direction it's going. And that is what we call linear momentum in the linear world. There's also angular momentum or rotational momentum, which is a mass now spinning. And you can change two things about that. You can change how fast it spins, spinning faster or slower, or you can change the direction that it's spinning in. So we have two types of momentum that we need to cover. One is momentum in a straight line, linear momentum, and one is momentum that is rotating, angular momentum. So those are the two basic things we need to understand. Now let's pop over here and let's see how we can affect those things. Okay, we are gonna start with a basic cart. This is gonna be linear motion. Now, there's two sets of initial things I wanna look at. The first thing is, if this thing is not moving at all, so it has zero momentum, has no momentum, and I pull it to the left, it moves to the left. If it has no momentum at all, and I pull it to the right, it moves to the right, if I pull it up, sorry, table's not exactly level. If I pull it up, it moves up. If I pull it down, it moves down. That um, you know, should be, I guess, pretty straightforward that it would behave that way. But what happens when this thing is moving and we start doing those different types of pulling? Let's find out. So let's say it's moving to the left. So I'm gonna bring this over here to start. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pull backwards. So it's moving to the left, I'm gonna pull backwards. And what I can do is slow it down. If it's moving to the left and I pull it to the left, I can speed it up. Notice that those behaviors are different now. Even though those both probably make a lot of sense, I'm pulling to the right, it's not moving to the right, it's slowing down now. Interesting. Okay, things get really interesting if I pull down while it's moving to the left. Let's look at that. So here I'm gonna pin my thumb so that pulls down and I'm gonna move this. Whoa, what is happening there? Let's do it again. Have a little bit of issue with friction. Same thing will happen if I pin it this way and give it a velocity this way. <laughs> a little off-roading there. So what's happening here? Well, momentum is moving this way. I'm pulling down. I can't increase or decrease the momentum. Remember that to increase or decrease, I need to pull forward or back. So the only thing I can do is change the direction of the momentum. So if I pull to the left, it moves to the left. This is how orbits work, by the way. A planetary body has some velocity. Gravity is pulling inward like this, and you get an orbit. So it's changing the direction, but it's, it can't slow it down, right? It can't change the size of the momentum, all right? It can only change its direction. 
So that's linearly what happens in those various scenarios. Now let's take a look at the rotational case. So now let's take a peek at the rotational version, which is quite interesting. We're going to go through the exact same steps that we did over there. We're going to look at scenarios where this is at rest initially and then where it's moving initially. So the first thing I want to think about is I have a bike wheel, it's at rest. Okay, let's move it over here, maybe it's a little easier to see. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up on it, this way on the wheel. So I'm pushing on the wheel this way. And what you're going to see is I can speed this wheel up and I'm speeding it up in the direction of counterclockwise. Okay. I can pull down, so it's at rest, I can pull down on it this way, and you'll see I'm speeding the wheel up in the direction of clockwise. Okay? The other thing I can do is I can pull down on this peg, and the wheel rotates that way. So again, pull this way, it rotates this way, push up, it rotates that way. All right? Pull down on a peg, it moves down, push up on the peg, it moves up. Maybe that's better from here. Push down on the peg, it moves down. Pull up on the peg, it moves up. So this is when the bike wheel is at rest. Same scenarios that we saw over there. Now let's see what happens when I spin this thing up. So I'm gonna spin it up. All right, so right now we are rotating in the counterclockwise direction. If I push down on this, this way, I can slow it down. Same thing like, pulling the opposite direction the cart was moving. So I can slow the wheel down until it stops. If I continually push up on the wheel, I can speed it up. <laughs> same thing like when I was pulling the cart in the same direction, speed it up. So that's changing the magnitude of that spinning momentum, that angular momentum. But here's where things get interesting. What happens if I pull down? on the peg. Now we already saw over there with the linear world that when something was moving and I pulled down, it started orbiting, right? I could only change the direction of that linear momentum. Let's find out. So I'm going to spin this up, get it going nice and good. Okay. Increasing its angular momentum, increasing its spinning momentum. All right. We're going to look at the side and now gravity is going to be the thing. Gravity is going to pull down on that peg. Are we ready? One, two, three, boom. Same exact thing is happening that was happening over there. Okay, let's do that again. Get a little bit faster this time. What's happening is I can't change how fast it's spinning. Gravity cannot change how fast this wheel spins, right? It can only change the direction it's spinning in. So gravity is pulling down and it's rotating around and around. This is exactly equivalent to the cart going around when I was pulling down with a string. So orbits and gyroscopic precession, which is what this is called, are related. And it is a very interesting topic. Okay? There's some other really cool things with gyroscopes besides just precession that I'll probably discuss in a later video. But for today, that's what we're going to cover. All right, I'm a little out of breath. Uh, it turns out holding this wheel up for that long is a little bit of a workout. Um, anyway, I hope that we all learned something today. And dare say, I hope maybe we had a little bit of fun. Um, if you enjoy science content, go ahead and give me a subscribe. I post short once a week on Thursdays usually, and I'm trying to get better about posting long content. Right now I'm going to be posting every other week on Saturday, but that'll soon be every Saturday. Uh, it's just a little bit busy right now in the summer. So in the meantime, remember, physics is fun, and we'll catch you in the next one.